allowing us to be here. And uh, we pray, God, that, that you bless the service. Father, we thank you for uh, just uh, those that are willing to give their time to teach and to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, just uh, be involved in ministry uh, in the different areas, the nursery, uh, the choir, and uh, sound, just, just all these things, Father, being a deacon. And, uh, Father, we just pray that uh, uh, working with youth and just everything, Father, we just give you glory and praise. Help us, Father, to honor you and all that you do. Speak to our hearts tonight, Father, in this message, in this song, Father, and help us to realize how great Thou art. We pray this in Christ's name and for His sake. Amen. All right, did you already turn us on here? Yeah, story. All right, story, amen. Story. There was something else I was going to say, and now I can't remember what it is. Make I remember when I go back here and try to sing the choir. I know what it is.
Christians with some just some good old fashioned goodness. <laughs> Amen. Don't we? Y'all with me tonight? <laughs> Come on, folks. God is good. Wait till you see this tonight. We're going to go into, uh, in this particular psalm, we're going to go into 2 Kings. We're there. You know, the old king of Assyria, uh, Sennacherib, you know, he's, uh, they're, they're bringing all this stuff before Hezekiah. And man, he's, and boy, man, it's just so good, folks. What, what's there in the word? You know, and, and this is this is God's word. It's it's a it's a you know it's the greatest book of all time. There's no book that stands before this book, amen. And uh, we need it. We need God's word. This is God's uh, written revelation, amen. Uh, telling us about who? Telling us about God. It is about God, amen. And then why He made what He made. And he's doing what He's doing, right, amen. And uh, what what a blessing that is. Now we all. Have y'all, y'all, all, y'all, y'all, all are humans, aren't you, <laughs> out there, right? We all are humans, and we're all in need of God, right? We all make make mistakes and mess up and get off track, and but right, we, we need God to put us back on the straight and narrow. We need to focus on God, and focus on others, amen, and God's going to work out the rest of the details. Isn't that wonderful? Matter of fact, listen, he's already worked out all the details. I, I get excited when, and folks, listen, I know, every, you know everybody's got to die. Everybody's got to die. Y'all know that, right? Everybody's got to die. Miss Fletcher went on to be with the Lord, uh, spent four years of dementia and all kinds of things there, just uh, difficult times, and man, she ain't having difficult times today. And her daughter died a month ago, and, and, and they met in heaven, According to the Bible, <laughs> according to the Bible, you know, they met Jesus, amen, and uh, he ushered them in. By the way, that's the only way you get in. Listen, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Y'all ready? Peter's not at the gate. <laughs> Peter ain't at the gate. 
<laughs> Jesus is taking you in. Amen. He's going to be the first one you see. I like what Fanny Crosby said. Boy, when uh, she when she dies, first face she's going to see is Jesus. And then she's going to see it. Oh, it's, just, it's, it's just God's plan is mind-boggling, isn't it? All right. I'm feeling like I need to move on because I got to, now I got uh, Melanie at the piano. And I don't want to keep her there too long. Like, Melanie, you, you won't believe this, but I kept Lisa there all night one night. <laughs> so better not do that. Okay. Amen. I won't call for a You went down there, man. You trying, trying to confuse me or what? Oh man. You don't even worry you got yourself. Let's take our hymn books, please, and turn to page 437. Send the lights going on this week, y'all. It's just started. Let's stand and sing the first, second, and last verses, please, page 437. <laughs> to her brain. She said she was thankful for that. And uh, I, I didn't, I, I'm not Randy, so I didn't make any jokes. I didn't say anything about that at all. I left that right where it lies. I'm a smart man sometimes. But anyway, so pray for her if you would. I got a, uh, it's interesting today, just this interesting day, you know, I got some emails uh, early, uh, when I came to church uh, tonight and uh, I haven't got emails from these guys in a good while, the Spence family. Uh, you remember the Spence family uh, from New Zealand? They, they're helping uh, over in Mongolia. They're going back uh, next week, I think. And so I uh, got their letter. I don't know why I wasn't getting it. And, uh, but anyway, I got it. And uh, their email. Um, and so pray for them. Lift them up uh, to the Lord in prayer. And then I got a, uh, I don't know if you remember the Beelers or not, in Ecuador. Uh, 
Uh, they came a couple times, uh, just he presented his work one time. Uh, we don't support them or never have. And, uh, but anyway, uh, they've gone back to Ecuador and they're in a little town, uh, you know, going to plant a church there. And so I uh, got an email, same day, you know, I got an email from them. Uh, and so <clears throat> uh, lift them up to the Lord in prayer. If you would, pray for my sister Sherry, uh, Sherry Cooper um, with uh, Brindley. Uh, Brindley is getting older and she's also getting heavier and so it's really difficult on my sister my sister has some stairs that she has to carry her up and down and it's really really uh getting uh, difficult for her and so they're looking at uh, uh maybe selling the house and, and, and getting a smaller house getting something you know it's going to be more compatible for them and so just pray there because it's really taxing you know and now and of course all of her girls are you know getting older and uh so just pray there for her if you would that would be great um, um, I wish you'd pray for uh, uh, Brian Palmer uh, and Jimmy Walls they got different situations uh, uh, they were on my prayer list today for prayer and uh, they text me back uh, for prayer and so lift them up to the Lord in prayer if you would uh, that would be great uh, I certainly invite them uh, to come back to the church you know anytime and, uh, visit us and, uh, uh, I like to keep relationships don't you uh, you never know what God's going to do in people's lives, and and I want people to see that you know, hey, we're uh, you know uh, open, right? Amen. And uh, have a desire to help people, amen. And you know, people got problems. You know, folks, people got all kinds of problems. You know, this is this this is a uh, this church should be a it should be there should be all kinds of things, right? Right, and definitely should be a hospital, shouldn't it? People hurting people to be able to come and share their burdens, and, and we have a real desire to, to pray for them and lift them up. You know what that takes, don't you, folks? It starts with a T. Time, folks. Listen, you realize that's the greatest commodity today. Time. It's not treasure. It's not all these other people give their money, folks. Listen, we're <laughs> come on. Do you realize we're blessed beyond measure and how God has blessed us here as a church? financially, the things that God has allowed us to do. People don't mind sending their money. Different things like that, you know. It's time. It's taking time, right? Amen. God help us. Phil Young is in the ICU. Uh, pray for him. Lift him up. Uh, trying to figure out some things there with him. Don't have a lot of information there. Uh, Paul and Villa. <laughs> you messed with me, man. <laughs> Paul and Bill. Uh, he has some slip-ups in the choir. And man, now I'm having slip ups. Uh, come on, man. <laughs> Paula and Bill have the flu, so pray for them. And uh, I don't know what Randy and I have. We got some. <laughs> pray for us. Um, anyway, wow. I don't know why. <laughs> you know the Bible says a merry heart do it good like a medicine. And I sure hope you guys are feeling good out there. <laughs> wow. Man. Hopefully we only get two views <laughs> on YouTube. They'd be like, what's going on? What are they, they having the laughing revival. It came back from Canada, you know, down there at Faith Baptist Church. Hey, Amen. All right. I'm going to try to get it in gear. John O'Connor is a friend of mine. Uh, stays in contact with me. I coached his son, Ryland, several years ago. He's on John's team. Uh, they graduated together and played together in the last year. And uh, He texted me, too. He was on my prayer list today. And his PSA is high. And uh, so he's just trusting the Lord with this. He's had some problems in the past. And, and so pray for him. Uh, and and uh, just pray that God would touch him there and uh, be with him. If you would, of course, pray for the Fletcher family. Continue to lift them up. To the Lord in prayer. Heard that the funeral went well. Praise God for that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, excited about Claire Brady. Uh, that's exciting. You know what's going on there. Hope we might be able to see her. Love to see her come to the church. Uh, that'd be a blessing. Amen. Love to see her get saved. She's not saved. And uh, that would be just a blessing. Uh, pray for Billy Phillips. Trying to get in touch with Billy. Uh, just had not got anything back from him. And just pray there for him if you would. Uh, Doug did text me back, Doug Donovan, he was on my prayer list today too, and uh, uh, Judson has COVID, and so he's in isolation in, in the prison, and so pray for him if you would, continue to pray for Liz uh, and her, her husband there, 
my, my brother-in-law, Greg, will go on the 20th uh, to have surgery on his back. He's already had hip replacement, knee replacements, all these other kind of things. So now he's gonna have, some, have to have some back uh, surgery. Um, actually, a, a neurosurgeon in the family is gonna do it. A good neurosurgeon uh, is gonna do that. Um, and so anyway, just pray the Lord will bless that. But most of all, pray that Greg trusts Christ. You know, pray the Lord will touch his heart. You know, you want your family to be saved. Amen? You, and not just your family, but everybody. But, you know, as Jamie said, you know, there's this, you know, you want the Spirit of God working, right? This fear, you know, you want to make sure that it's God. But we ought to all have a passion and desire, right, for people to be saved. Amen? Folks, listen, we're talking eternity, folks. Right? We're not going to be here long. Right? God help us. God help us. And uh, and God help your pastor, right? Pray for your pastor. I want to have the passion and the, and, and, and the compassion for people to, to be able to help them and, and it to be real. I don't want it to be rote. I want it to be real. You, folks, listen, we all can put this outward appearance thing, you know. We really need to spend some time with God alone and ask God to help us uh, be more compassionate and more helpful and have a passion for Christ. Listen, folks, you're going to want to win souls. you got a passion for Christ. Amen. That's, we don't need to put soul winning in front of passion for Christ. Amen. That, that comes afterwards. Right? Same thing with working and witnessing. It's worshiping first. It's worshiping. Amen. Do you realize we're in a country, we're in a churches all across, they have no clue what it really means to worship? Folks, they got all kinds of ideas about worship. You know, worship is worship. It's not worthship. It's not about you. It's about him. Amen. Placing worth where it belongs. You can see that tonight in Psalm 76. Anyway, help us, help us, help us. Any, any other prayer requests? Yes. Um, I think last week I had everybody pray for the music teacher that has a trap. Her daughter has for surgery on Friday. surgery seems like it went well and so uh, praise God for that um, Hannah got a, a, a text from a Bree's uh, mother uh, who has another child and is it Zay mm -hmm. and uh, anyway um, he had this surgery and real uh, serious surgery and so we're, we're just glad for this and it, it came through it well and it's looking good there and we're just glad for this contact you know we're praying for this family for salvation and folks that's what is important that's what's important Salvation, salvation, and, and walking with God. Not just being saved, but just walking with God and have a relationship with God. So pray for Zay and uh, the family there. Just lift them up. And of course, all these on the prayer list that don't know the Savior. Anybody else? Prayer request? All right, Phil, pray for us, please, sir, if you would. <coughs> Lord, what a privilege to be able to sing the songs of the redeemed. Amen. What an honor, Lord, to know that at Haven to Rest, the mm -hmm. choir was singing about. Right. I'm so thankful for all those fetters that fell off of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all the change that we were connected to that you delivered us from, O oh Lord and Lord. <clears throat> Thank you for the deliverance in our soul that we can know that we're saved and free and liberated people. We're uncondemned before God, our Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord, tonight for that grace and eternal mercy. We see thee to consider you, to consider you and look at you, O Lord. <laughs> what a privilege and what an honor. Amen. Thank you tonight for this time to come together. Thank you for this house of hope. Amen. That we can right. come to and receive what right. we need. Amen. Bless us tonight as we leave. Yes. Bless Brother Bobby. You may strengthen him. Give to us that light of understanding, precious spirit that we need. Amen. Oh, may we leave here seeing him afresh. For it's in the precious name of Christ I pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Somebody tell Phil. Did somebody tell Phil what we preached on this morning? Uh, looking, looking, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Consider him. Yeah. Somebody tell him that. Somebody. Yeah. Hebrews 3. 
<laughs> Hebrews 12. Right. Yes, sir. Hebrews 12. Amen and amen. <laughs> Praise God. Nobody told him that, but the Spirit of God had him pray that for us, didn't he? And uh, we need to consider him. We need to look at him. And tonight, that's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna look at him uh, in uh, Psalm 76. The top of my Bible uh, says this, this new Bible that I got. I like these little headings that they put up there. And, they, and, they, and, and different ones have different things, different Bibles. But really, this one right here said, God alone is to be feared. God alone is to be feared. And uh, what you have before you in this psalm, Psalm 76, most believe that this was when uh, old Sennacherib, you know, the, uh, the king of Assyria, uh, he was uh, uh, talking a lot of smack. <laughs> now, that's a, that's a word for uh, the younger generation. And, uh, but he was, he was saying all these kind of things that he was going to do. And, uh, you know, and he was telling them, don't believe uh, Hezekiah. Don't believe uh, when he tells you that the Lord's going to protect them. And uh, the Lord's going to do this and that. He said, you better not believe him. He said, you better look at history. He said, you better look at the Assyrian history and, and all the things we've conquered. He said, ain't nobody messed with us. We're going to read that in just a minute. But we're going we're gonna to realize, I hope all of us are going to realize that God alone is to be feared. Amen. And uh, in this particular passage, of Scripture is going to be divided up in four different sections. And uh, there's some things that uh, we need to see in our own lives about God. Now, one of them is going to be that, that, that we need to reverence God. And uh, that's, that's really what he's talking about when he's talking about this thing of fear. He's talking about having that awe of God. And, and, and really, some men in the right, I, I believe you shouldn't, you know, we, we, somebody, you know, does an amazing dunk or he hits a 500-foot a, 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 a shot uh, in uh, baseball or, or throws an a 80-yard pass or something like that. And we say, that was awesome. You know, really, there's, you know, that's, that's probably just, well, we probably should say that. That's pretty good. You know, really awesome. The word awesome probably should only be used for God. Amen, bro. Right? Yeah. You know? And I'm guilty of it too, folks. Listen, people think I'm trying to give people a hard time. I'm not. I'm trying to learn myself, amen. <laughs> I'm trying to learn how I talk and uh, how I need to talk better and walk better and be better and all those kind of things. We all do, right? Amen? And so here... Uh, Asaph is going to talk about these things, you know, that, that you and I, and, and they're simple things, just like old Pastor Jones told us in Bible College. He said, you're going to preach about six or seven things, and you're just going to say them over and over, because that's what the Bible does. It's about all we can handle. Amen? Right? And uh, so we're going to talk about these four things tonight. We're going to see them in the Scriptures. We want to read the passage of Scripture, and... Um, Hey, let's do something different tonight. Now, we might not do this all the time, but I feel like we're going to do something different tonight. I want you to stand up and let's read the Word of God as we stand up and uh, give reverence to God's Word. You know, many of men do this. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I think it's good. And uh, I feel like in my heart, God said, do it tonight. So I'm going to do it tonight. I don't want it to be wrote, right? And uh, so let's read the Word of God. And I'm going to read the Word of God, and then you uh, <clears throat> um, uh, read along with me. He says... And, in Psalm 76, in Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle, and his dwelling place in Zion. There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword, and the battle. Selah. Thou art more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. The stout-hearted are spoiled. They have slept their sleep, and none of the men of might have found their hands. At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both chariot and horse are cast into a deep sleep. Thou, even thou, art to be feared. And, thou, and, and who may stand in thy sight when thou art angry? Thou didst cast, ju or cause judgment to be heard from heaven, and the earth feared and was still. When God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, Selah, surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him be presents unto him that ought to be feared. He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. 
You may be seated. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for who you are. We thank you, dear God, for the reading of your word, Father. We pray that we would have reverence for you and reverence for your word. And God, that you would just speak to our hearts tonight. What a blessing it is, again, to know you. But more importantly than that, Father, is that you know us. And Father, we just pray, dear God, uh, that uh, we would continue to allow you to work in our hearts and lives and guide us and direct us through this passage of Scripture. Uh, Father, uh, we love you. We thank you for loving us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen and amen. The first three verses here, um, speaking of God, and it's that God, again, you'll, you'll find this all through the Scriptures, folks. God, God desires to be known. God desires to be known. Now, on Wednesday nights, we're going through uh, the plagues and, and uh, uh, the Egypt, the Egyptian bondage, and being uh, set free there. Our dear brother just prayed about these chains. You know, the devil will kill, continue to try to put you back in the chains. And he will. And uh, you know how you get back there? Sin. That's how you get back there. The devil wants you to stay in chains, but God has released you from those chains. Amen? And you're free in him. Uh, I, I sent out a text this week, and I've been reading uh, this book by Tozer uh, from Tozer Pulpit. And, and uh, there is no real true freedom except in the will of God. Amen. Amen. That's where you'll find true freedom. Amen. And uh, God wants to be known. And so here's what he says. He said in Judah, and he's going to talk about, uh, again, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, uh, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Of course, we know they were uh, divided up and, uh, uh, because of sin, again, and going against God. And, uh, but he says, in, in, in Judah is God known, amen? His name is great in Israel, right? Amen? Do you, you realize we have a lot to thank God for? And, uh, uh, and we have a lot to thank Israel for, the Jewish nation, the Jewish people, that, that God brought the Bible, he brought his son, and, and all these things come through this nation. And we know it's ultimately God, amen, right? And, uh, but boy, oh boy, uh, we know that God uh, desired to be known in Israel. He wanted Israel when he took them out of the bondage, you know, in Egypt. He wanted them to know him, amen, who he is, praise God. And boy, oh boy, if there's anything we need to know about God, God is great. Amen? He's great. We need to know more about his greatness, more about who he is, amen? And we need to praise him. For that, he says, in Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There he break the arrows of the bow and the shield and the sword in the battle. And so many believe again that uh, Asaph is going back and uh, and he's remembering what God did when He delivered His people from uh, these Assyrians, when all the uh, the talk of what they were going to do to God's people and all these different things, but. But God, uh, he's the one that delivered them. And by the way, listen, God has delivered you and me from any enemy that we have in our lives. Amen? And really, really, folks, the, re the, the thing is, we, what we need to do in life is get to know God better. Amen? Amen? I, I like Psalm 4610, don't you? <laughs> what is Psalm 4610, right? Be still and know that I am God. There's a lot in that verse, by the way. Isn't there? Be still and know, right? Right? That I am God. When you just say, God, that's, 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 that's uh, <clears throat> massive. Some of the psalms say, oh, come with me and magnify the Lord, right? And we talked about that word magnify. It's to, it's to see things bigger. You can't make God bigger, amen? He's, he, he's just vast. He's eternal, right? Amen? But you know what you can do? You know, I, I read this book one time, Your God's Too Small. You think our God's too small? I do. I, think, I mean, I'm talking about... Your God, my God, he, or the real God, amen, he, he's not too small, amen. Right, amen, he's great. He has a desire uh, to be known, amen. There's, there's nobody going to, you know, uh, like again, I, and I've read a lot of Tozer, and I like what Tozer says. He said, oh, little man, <laughs> keep shaking, shaking your finger at God. He said, God's going to have the last say. 
God's going to have a last say. And so when we go back into 2 Kings chapter 18 and 19, you, you see what the psalmist, uh, to make it a little more real to us, amen, so we can see what he's talking about in history and what, what God had done. And, and uh, in this psalm, by the way, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's supposed to be a song that's sung, and it's supposed to be that word, uh, nigioth, is, is a, a, an instrument they believe. And still, some people really don't know what the word is, but... Uh, they believe it's some type of in instrument or song, and and so mm -mm -mm, uh, that's to be played. So he, the first and foremost thing that that in our lives is is God ought to be known, Amen. And He desires to be known, right? God wants you to know Him, Amen. Who He is, praise God, right? Amen. Do you want to know God? How do we get to know God? Participation in Sunday night service. His word. We have his word, folks. 66 books. Isn't it a shame that God's people don't know God and his word? Right? Come on, y'all. Y'all with me, right? We need to know God. Who he is. You know, I, I don't know how many problems it would solve. <laughs> you know, I really don't. But I believe it would solve a lot of our problems if we knew God better. Doesn't mean the problems are going to go away. But you know, often some of the problems would go away because the problem is with you and me. We just don't know God. And we don't know how God wants us to be and how he wants us to respond, how he wants us to act. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute too, right here in this very passage of scripture. But turn, me if you, turn with me if you would. And um, of course, uh, uh, we'll get back to verses four and six. Well, let's read verses four and six too because this, this is the second thing that, that, that needs to be uh, uh, in our lives uh, first of all, God wants to be known. And then second of all, God uh, needs to be trusted. God needs to be believed. <laughs> you realize, folks, I've said this to you, but I'm going to keep saying it. Because we live in amongst the church members uh, of unbelieving, uh, I mean, unbelieving believers. We just don't believe God. Well, I just don't, I don't know, I just don't know. Well, what kind of attitude is that? We, we need to know, amen, what God desires, amen, and what God wants to do. Can God? Can God? Right? Now, folks, listen. We've depended way too much on preachers and missionaries to build churches. Preachers and missionaries don't build churches. Christ builds the church, amen? And he, he does it through his people, amen? You and me, amen? Now, everybody expects Pastor Bobby to be a witness. Everybody expects Pastor Bob to be telling people about Jesus. And Pastor Bob, ought to be telling people about Jesus. Amen. But so should you. God wants to be known. He wants to be made known. Amen. By you and me. Right? We need to trust him. Notice what the Bible says here. He says, he says Thou art more glorious and excellence than the mountains of prey. The stout-hearted are spoiled. They have slept their sleep. None of the men might have found their hand... Have Men of might have found their hands. At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and horse are cast into a deep sleep. Now, folks, listen. Go into 2 Kings now, chapter 18. 2 Kings chapter 18. I want you to, I want you to see this. And I, I really hope that, I hope that you'll get excited. As, I hope I get excited again. Amen. As, I, as, as we read this together with one another. And uh, because it's just a, uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful passage of scripture, amen. And um, so, 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 bear with me, and uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as we read this, it's 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 kind of long, and it's okay. It's all right. We're gonna we're gonna read it, and and, and we're gonna get the gist of what's happening here, and, and we want to understand how King Hezekiah, uh, he's like you and me. He's a human being. And he needs not fear man. He needs to fear God. He needs to know that God is who he says he is, that he is great, and that, that he can trust God and believe God is going to take care of business. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Right? I, I think Phil has prayed before that uh, about God showing up. <laughs> Amen? And this is what God's going to do right here. He's going to show up. And, uh, and, you know, folks, listen, don't, don't get... 
don't get upset with people. Uh, you know, people use these terms like showed up and not that term, but some people say showed out. And, 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 and people understand what that means, or they should, I mean. And, and that's what God, that's what God does. And he's the only one that can really do it perfectly. Amen. And that's what he's going to do right here. Look with me at 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse 9. It came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, son of Eli, king of Israel. And, and Shalmanazar, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and, and besieged it. And at the end of three years, they took it, in the, excuse me, even in the sixth year of Hezekiah. That is the ninth year of Hosea, uh, Hoshea, king of Israel. Samaria was taken. And the king of Assyria did carry away uh, Israel unto Assyria and put them in Hala and Hebron by the river of Gozon in the city of Medes. Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant, and all the Moses' the servant the Lord commanded, and would not hear them, nor do to them. Now, realize this, okay? What God is saying here is, the reason why Assyria was able to capture and all these other kind of things is because they disobeyed God, right? Amen? God never intended this for them to be in this bondage, but they chose to be in it because they disobeyed God. God and what God had told him to do. Now, in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah, okay, and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent out uh, to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have, I have offended, return from me, that thou puttest me will I bear. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver, 30 talents of gold, and Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house. And at, that, and at that time did his Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan, and you can read those other names. I'm just like Jesse. Uh, I have a hard time reading these names too, Jesse. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. When they stood... <clears throat> And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is the highway of the fuller's field. And when they had called the king, there came out Elikim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shibna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak ye now to Hezekiah. Thus saith, thus saith the great king, the king of of Assyria. What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Sounds like the devil to me, doesn't it? No. Thou sayest, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom do thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Now behold, thou trustest upon the staff of a bruised reed. But even upon Egypt, on a man, if he may lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt unto all that trust on him. But if ye say unto me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away, and has said to Judah and Jerusalem, ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? Now therefore, I pray thee, give pledges to my Lord, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver thee two thousand horses if thou be able to part thy riders upon them. How, when, how then wilt thou turn, <clears throat> turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Am I now come up without the Lord against the place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Elikam, the son of Hilkiah, and Shephi, and Joab, uh, Speak, I pray thee, to thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it. And talk not with us in the Jews' language in the ears of the people that are on the wall. But Rabshakeh mm -mm, said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master, and to thee speak these words? Hath he not sent me to men which sit on the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spake, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you. 
He shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. Hello? Don't believe that preacher and what he says. Don't believe the word of God. Don't believe what God says in his word. Right? Now, we, they didn't have God's word like we have God's word, but God's word ought to be the focal point of the church, amen? Because God's word is what, where Christ is, and Christ needs to be uplifted and preached, amen? Not somebody else, not some program, not something else. It should be God's word, amen? 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 What God says in his word. Now, I'm not against programs, I'm not against fellowships, I'm not against all those other things, YouTube audience, but I believe God's word ought to be the focal point, amen? Amen? He says, hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria again, make an agreement with me by a present, and come out uh, to me, and then eat every man of his own vine. Oh, man. Promises, promises, just like the devil. The promises, promises of how the going against God will, will make life better. No, it makes life worse. Amen. God help us to recognize that. He said, in, in, in a land of corn, like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, and a land of olive oil and of honey, that ye may live and not die. Now, he's, gonna, he's the one that's going to give them life, right? It's just like the devil again, folks. Promises us life, but only brings us death. That's all sin can do. That's all Satan can do, the father of lies. God, God tells us the exact opposite. He said we're to die to our own wishes and our own ways and we'll live. Amen. That's what God says. He says here, again, hearken not unto Hezekiah when he, pers when he persuadeth you, saying, the Lord will deliver us. Now listen to this arrogance, folks. It's this arrogance. Where are the gods of Haman? No, no, wait, sorry. Have any of the gods of the nations delivered all his hand out of the hand of the king of Assyria? It's coming, buddy. Where are the gods of Hamath and of Arphed? And where are the gods of Seraphim and Hannah and Iba? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Arrogance to the core. Who are they among all the gods of the countries that, they, that, that have delivered their country out of my hand? That the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. Do you understand what this man is saying? Do you get it, folks? He's saying, I've conquered everybody and their gods, and your God is nothing. Do you realize that's what the world's doing today, making a mockery out of our God? That's right. And why are they making a mockery out of God? I'm going to tell you why. Because most people in the church don't know God, well, and we're proclaiming some other God. Did you realize, folks, I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you as sure as I'm standing here. I read this in Tozer's book, and I couldn't believe it. It was written in the 50s. And you know what he said? I'm talking about the 50s, folks. He said, man, in the church, they're talking about being a Republican or a Democrat. Huh? I, I thought I was reading today. I couldn't believe it. He said the church needs to be proclaiming the gospel. Amen. The church needs to be standing for the Lord. Amen. The, the citizen, you are, are citizens of the United States of America. Amen. You ought to, hey, right? You ought to do the right voting. You ought to do the right things. You ought to do your research and you do all those kind of things. But I'll tell you what, the church's responsibility is to, to, to evangelize and to, to, to reach the lost. Amen. Listen, there ain't going to be no Democrat, Republican, or Independent or anything else in heaven. Now we were, oh, oh, help that man. That's right, you need, you need to pray for that man. I need help. Amen? We need to get back to what the Bible says. It ain't nobody, listen, this country, I'm telling you right now, this country ain't going down without God letting it go down. Now, I hope most of you believe that God has had his hand on the United States of America. Amen. You know, I hope you believe that. Now, and guess what? It ain't going nowhere until God allows it to go somewhere. Right. Amen. We're putting our trust in man rather than God. This guy is arrogant and boastful. Hey, he's seeing all these things, right? We need somebody like David back in the day, right? Is there not a cause? Amen. Stand against 
I'm talking about living our lives and, 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 and asking God to, to help us to, uh, to fight against the, the evils of the day. God help us. So, arrogance. Arrogance. He says in verse 36, but the people, listen, but the people held their peace and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was saying, answer him not. Then came Elikam, the son of Hilkiah, which over the house of Shivna and the scribe, and joined uh, uh, Joab, Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah with, the, the, with, with their clothes rent and, and told him the words of Rabshakeh. <laughs> and it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it that he ran his clothes. And he covered himself with sackcloth. He went to be with God. This was their way in the Old Testament. And he went into the house of the Lord. Amen. Now, where are we running to? <laughs> Man. Right? Let's run to God. Amen. We need to trust God, right? Here's the situation, folks. Now, this is a boastful man, right? This king of Assyria, right? This is a guy that has conquered and conquered. He's telling the truth here, folks. None of these other gods have been able to stand up against him. But he ain't met the one true God. <laughs> Amen? Right? Now, I say to you again, folks, I never get tired of saying certain things because I'm always fascinated with the scriptures and different things. When, when them old seven sons of Sceva, man, went in there and they thought they was going to be bad boys, you know, and they said, we adjure you in the name of Jesus in the name of Paul. And the demon said, Paul, uh, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? That's our problem today. We're trying to fight a war uh, with a God that we don't know in our, own, in our own strength. Right? God help us. Hezekiah went to the house of the Lord, and he sent El 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 Elikim, which was over the household, and Shimon the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, this day is a day of trouble. <laughs> We're in that kind of day too, are we? In a day of trouble, what should you do? You should trust God. But you need to know God, right? In order to trust God. Right? You with me? And we're going to get back to that psalm in just a minute. He says, uh, uh, this is a day of trouble. And of rebuke. And blasphemy. For the children are come to birth and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be... <clears throat> The Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God. And will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. Amen. You think we should be praying for each other? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Do you realize that, you know, folks, I said this to you this morning, and I believe this to be true. I believe there's a lot of casualties in the church and church people because God's people ain't praying. Right. You say, back that up with the Bible. Read, read Ephesians chapter 6. He says there, he said, he said take the, uh, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. He said, praying always with all prayer and supplication. You know what he said? For all saints. Amen. We need to be praying for one another. This is a war, folks. Amen. And so they've made the they got a prayer meeting here. So the servants of Hezekiah, uh, the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. Now, now we are we've heard a lot. We've heard a lot from this king of Assyria, haven't we? Haven't we? Man, he's a boastful man. He's an arrogant man. He's a blasphemous man. He's talking a lot of smack, isn't he? Isaiah says, go, 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 tell, go tell King Hezekiah. Thus saith the Lord. Do you know that's all that matters? Amen. Do you realize that, folks? Do you realize it don't matter what's happening around you? It don't matter all the different things that are going on in your life. What matters is thus saith the Lord. Trust him over anything else. Now, folks, I'm telling you, we're in a day of trouble today. Now, I'm not joking with you. Hey, this is a bad day we're living in. Folks, listen, you got to be crazy if you can't look around and not see we're in a bad day today. 
People need the Lord. But we need God's people saying, well, thus saith the Lord. Amen? There's no need to fear man. We need to reverence and fear God. Amen? Thus saith the Lord. Notice this. Thus saith the Lord, be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard, which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Blaspheme God. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. <laughs> Amen and amen and praise God. Right? Amen? Now, I'm excited for the second time, and I'm, I'm hoping and I'm looking, I want you guys to be excited about your God. Amen? To know that your God is your protector. Amen? You can trust God in any situation. I didn't hear one amen. That's okay. You probably said it in your heart, I guess. Amen? God help us. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libnah, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. And when he, when he heard saying of, of, of Turkanah and the king, the king of Ethiopia, behold, he was come out to fight against thee, he sent messengers unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not, the, let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them from my fathers, uh, which my fathers have destroyed, as in Gozan, and Haran, and Respa, and the children of Eden, which are in uh, Telazar? Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arphid, and the, and the city of Seraphim, and Hena, and Iva? And Hezekiah received the letter at the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Again, folks, right? <laughs> He's going to the right place, isn't he? Amen? He's not saying, oh, I'm going to take care of this and all this. No, 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 no. He's taking it to the right place. He's taking it to the right place. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, <laughs> Thou art God. Amen. Thou and thou alone. Amen? There is no other God. Now, I'll tell you what, the world don't like that, folks. But there is no other God. He ain't Allah. He ain't Buddha. He ain't anybody. He's God Almighty. Amen? Amen. He's Lord. He's sovereign. Amen? And praise God. Hey, hey, don't you, hey, don't you get all uh, jumpy and think that hey, you're all great. No, he's great. We're just blessed to know him. Who he is, amen. You could be in darkness just as anybody else could, folks, if it wasn't for the grace and the mercy of God. Amen? And folks, listen, that all excited and say, we know the one true God. These other people are going after gods made with hands. He's going after other gods that, that ain't even real. And they can't protect them. But our God can. Amen? And so he says, do you see how he approached God in his prayer? Thou art God. Amen. Almighty. Praise God. Thou art great. Right? Thou art God alone. All of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. <laughs> I'm telling you folks, listen to me. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Do we, need it. we need to understand some things. I tell you, Sue's doing a thing with Ken Ham for her Bible, and I'm so blessed. And she's blessed, and I'm glad that she's doing it. You know, I'm telling you, folks, we got to get back to the first 11 chapters of Genesis, God's creation. I tell you, we're fighting all these other kind of things that are only symptoms of people believing in this evolution. Where did you come from? Hey, you got to get back that God created the heaven and earth. Amen. He created everything. <laughs> he, he, he raises kings up. He sets them down. Yeah. That's the bottom line, folks. He's in control, praise God. You need to know him as that God. Amen. So Hezekiah. He's talking to God. He said, listen to what he says here, folks. He says, now, God Almighty, right? Lord God Almighty. Now it's, now it's, it's Lord. Sovereignty. Sovereign one. Self-sustaining one. You don't need nothing, God. <laughs> it's the you don't need anything, God. Lord. 
Bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent, or which hath, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations in their land. Did not just tell you that? This man's telling the truth. This king of Assyria. He did do all that stuff. He said, Lord, he said, it, listen, folks. Does God already know everything else God's telling him? Well, of course he does. But we need to talk to God and commune to God. We need to share with God our hearts and what's going on. And, and that's what he's doing here. He said, and have cast their gods into the fire. For, their, for they were no gods, but the work of man's hands, wood and stone. And there, therefore they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth, listen to me, well, think about me and how great of a king I am. Is that what it says? No, that's not what it says. It said that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God. Amen? Make him known. Trust him. Even thou only, you see. It ain't, it ain't some of these guys and they're just a little Lord. No, no, it ain't none of these guys. It's God and God alone. Amen. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah saying, here you go. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel. That thou, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, of king of Israel, I have heard. <laughs> Amen. 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 Prayer's answered. God has heard. God is going to deliver. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the virgin, the daughter of Zion hath despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken their head at thee, whom thou hast reproached and blasphemed, and against whom thou hast exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel. By thy messengers thou hast reproached the Lord and hast said, With the multitude of my chariots I come up in the height of the mountains to the sides of Lebanon and will cut down all the tall cedar trees thereof and the choice fir trees thereof. And I will enter to the lodges of the borders and to the forests of the Carmel. I have digged and drunk strange waters and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of the besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it and of ancient times that I have formed it and now I brought it to pass that thou shouldst be laid to waste the fenced cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore, their inhabitants were small power. They were dismayed and confounded that they were the grass of the field and the green herb as a green as a grass on the housetops and as corn blasted before grown up. But I know thy abode. <laughs> God knows. God, hey, God knows where this king is. <laughs> he ain't getting away from God. And thy going out and thy coming in, thy rage against me. Because thy rage against me and thy torment has come up into my ears, therefore I will put a hook in thy nose and my bridle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way which thou camest. And this shall be a sign unto ye. Ye shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves, and the second year that springeth up of the same. In the third year uh, sow ye and reap and plant vineyards and eat, that, and eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped from the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and fruit upward. Amen. Praise God. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they shall escape out of the Mount of Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts and shall do this. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, now come before it with a shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and he shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my, uh, uh, David, uh, for David, my servant David's sake. Amen. Wow, folks, listen. It came to pass that night. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and he smote in the camp of the Syrians a hundred and fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, 
they were all dead corpse. <laughs> That's our God. That's our God. And the Bible says, then Sennacherib, king of Assyria, that old bold man, you know, pointing his finger at God, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch, uh, his God, that Am Amorlag and Shazad, his sons, his sons, <laughs> his sons smote him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Armenia, and er Ershadad and his son reigned in his stead. Now, I'm going to tell you what, folks. I'm just going to be honest with you. That was worth every bit of reading that we did tonight. Let the word of God stand and speak to you. Amen? Let God, the God of this Bible, speak to your heart that he needs to be known and, be, and, and he needs to be made known and he needs to be trusted. Amen? In the midst of all of your troubles. Oh, my goodness. It's 719. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Because we're going to finish Jump on in here with me. Verse 7 through uh, uh, 10 is uh, our God should be feared. You're going to see over and over again. He's going to mention in verse 7. He's going to mention verse 8. He's going to mention in verse 11. And then verse 12, uh, this thing, uh, the word terrible, has the idea, again, of, of fear. But he says here in verse number 7, he said, Thou, even thou, art to be feared. God is to be reverenced. He's not only to be made known and, and he's not only to be uh, trusted, but God is to be feared. Amen. He's to be reverenced. He says, he said, uh, you sh thou art to be feared and who may stand in the sight when thou art angry. And aren't you glad, amen, that God took out his wrath upon his son and you and I uh, don't stand before him condemned. And, and, and it's not that God doesn't get angry with me, but we're never going to receive God's full wrath upon us because we've received his son who received our wrath for us. What a blessing, praise God. He said, uh, thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. <laughs> God, God can stop everything. Amen. He said, when God arose in judgment to save all the meek of the earth, Selah, he says in verse 10, and most don't even understand really, and I don't understand everything that he's saying. He said, surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. God will even use the wrath of man to praise him. Did you see what he did there to Sennacherib? You see how he brought about his own sons killed him. His wrath and God got glory out of that. Amazing. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee and the remainder of the wrath shall that restrain. Last of all, not only should God be made known and, and uh, be known and be made known and God should be, be trusted and believed on a daily basis and God should be uh, reverence and fear uh, in our hearts and our lives, but also God should be obeyed. Amen? Now, I'm guilty of this, and I know you've been guilty of this, and make vows before God and, and tell God you're going to do certain things, but I'll tell you, he says vow. But you know, in Ecclesiastes, he says don't make a vow if you're not going to be willing to keep that vow. Right? He said vow and pay unto the Lord your God all around about him. Bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. Then God should be obeyed. Right? Right? Now, these five that were baptized this past Sunday, they, they made a vow to God. In their baptism, they, it was a public profession of their faith saying they were going to serve God. They're going to walk with God. Amen? And that's what they ought to do. Right? right? Yeah. That's what we ought to do. God says here in verse number 12, He shall cut off, cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. Listen. God is in control. Amen. Listen to it, folks, tonight. This simple little song, it's not really simple. God should be known, amen, and be made known. God should be trusted and believed, right? Who, who can you believe other than God, amen? I'll tell you, folks, it's a crying shame that we believe the devil more than we believe God. It really is. God should be reverenced and feared, Amen. There ought to be some awe in our hearts towards who God is and his, his workings. I'm just amazed again how, how small we are and yet how God works things. You know, we were talking about these phones. You know, you can't even say too much without these phones picking it up. Y'all know that, right? It's crazy. 
It really is. We went up to Mount Airy, and next thing I know on Facebook, I had all kinds of things about Mount Airy. But again, folks, listen. <laughs> that ought to just tell us how knowledgeable God is. God's far beyond that. But you, you, listen. Now, folks, do I want the, the government to know everything I'm doing? No, I don't want the government knowing, hey, go ahead and help me out here, okay? The answer to that is no, I don't want the government knowing everything about my life. I don't want people peeping in on me and knowing all this kind of stuff. But you know what? God knows everything. He's higher than that. And so, hey, they may know all kinds of stuff about us, but you know what? God knows it all. I'm going to tell you what, they don't know everything, but God does. Hey, man, yes, I'm not telling you the truth tonight. He needs to be known and made known. He needs to be trusted and believed. He needs to be feared, feared and reverenced. And he needs to be obeyed. Amen. Let's do what we're saying we're going to do. How many of you tonight would say, you know, I've been guilty of some of these things. Not trusting God. Not having a real fear for God. And not obeying God like I should. Now, folks, listen. God is not some taskmaster, you know, trying to beat you into submission. You know, God gave us freedom, right, to choose, praise God. Don't you want to choose to be loving and joyous and kind, amen, and, right? Be like God. Don't you want to choose it? Man, do you want to be fake or do you want to be real, right? Do you want to be a shadow or do you want to be the substance, amen? What do you want in life? God, help us, right? I hope we go home tonight. Let's stand to our feet. I'll tell you, man, this, this passage has thrilled me. This, this thing with Hezekiah, I've, I've read it before, but it was just so fresh. Uh, reading it again, fresh tonight, again, to read it. And, and uh, why not go home tonight and spread your letter before God? What's your letter? What's troubling you? Why don't you spread that before God tonight and say, God, this is where my trouble is. Will you hear me, God? Now, don't come into this saying, God, will you hear me? And will you hear me yesterday? <laughs> you know, that's what hey, we, I tell you. We want the answer right now, don't we? Yeah, I, I like that. I'd like to get the answer right now, wouldn't you? But he might not give it right now. But trust him, right? Amen. And obey him. Reverence him. And then continue to get to know him. And continue to make him known. People need to know Jesus, don't they? Right. Amen you know him. Let's pray. Father, grateful for who you are. Thank you for the service tonight. Thank you for this wonderful song uh, that you put in your word. Father, may we use it this week. May you help us with it, Father. We all struggle. We all have battles. God, God, would you help us, Lord? Please, dear God, help us stay true to you and you alone no matter what we might face this week. Thank you, God. For it's in Christ's name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.